All right, welcome everyone. This is Python hack session with Women Who Code Python. Um, we're gonna start by um, some introductions. So here's the team here today. I'm Stephanie Wrightout and I'm joined by Chaitna Gopinath and Nayan Shin. And so, hi, I'm Stephanie Wrightout. I'm leadership fellow at Women Who Code for the Python track. I enjoy leading an amazing community of global track volunteers. They really are amazing. Um, some of my favorite activities include coding in Python. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Cycling, cooking, designing, and hanging out with my cats. <laughs> Chaitna is an associate software engineer at Realtor.com and a lead at Women Who Code Python. She is very passionate about learning new things and solving interesting and challenging problems. During her free time, she experiments with cooking dishes from different cuisines. She enjoys baking and likes to go on hikes, sorry, hikes, to beautiful scenic places. Nyon is a rising junior in college studying computer science and film media, media and theater. Nyan had a challenging time finding their first internship in their second year. They started getting involved in tech communities. Now Nyan is a Python track lead and general volunteer for the Soul Network at Women Who Code. So yes, so let's start off by just talking about what a hack session is. So at Women Who Code Python, um, so far we've hosted a few beginner Python study group meetup and hack session events. And so these sessions are general, generally include three breakout rooms, hack, problem solving, and social networking. Problem solving is an opportunity for um, people to bring a coding challenge that they're working on and to help get receive um, help and mentoring from their peers. And social and networking that, chan that um, breakout is really used for just general interaction. It's very laid back, um, kind of a basically a hangout. You can talk about different topics. So today we're going to focus specifically on just the hack session. And so what does that mean? In our hack sessions, our team will share a Google Colab link that includes several coding challenges. And we'll share that in just a moment. And then we code solutions together. So you're encouraged from this experience to write code in your own coding style and share it with us either in the chat during the event, or you can share it in the live events channel on our Slack community. And I have shared that in that Slack link in the chat already. So you can share it um, in either one of those um, locations if you want to. It's there's no pressure here, so you, you know, like um, we're here to help and encourage you in any way that we can. So awesome. So for our coding challenges to get started, um, we'll be sharing in a moment the Google Collab link um, with you all, and I'll be walking through that with you. So the coding challenges um, are either going to be demonstrated by our team in either Google Colab or REPL. Both are free uh, virtual IDEs, essentially. Um, so you're welcome to use your current coding environment. But just so you know, the second and third challenges that we're going to cover today are going to require starter code that you're going to need in order to um, execute the code. So without further ado, here is the agenda for the day. We're going to start off by taking care of our digital kitty cat by creating a simple beginner Python app. And then Chaitna is going to lead us through making a digital meal. And she has a really cool sandwich and smoothie cookbook, reci uh, cookbook recipe um, co program that she's going to create with us. And then we're going to clean our digital room um, with unpacking args and quargs uh, with Nyon. So very excited. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to share that Google Colab um, with everyone here. And then I'm going to share that with you on my screen. Awesome. And everyone can see that. Yes, you can. Great. And so for the first one, we are going to use uh, Google Colab. We're just going to code directly in here. But this one, really, you could do it in any 
IDE um, code editor that you would prefer to use. It doesn't matter. The code is very, very basic. Um, so if you are going to follow along in Google Colab, you will want to be sure that um, you have a Google account and you're signed in. And then once you do that, um, I have this direction in here. Um, in order to use this, you'll want to do file and then save a copy and drive. So we do file, save a copy in drive. And now, as you can see, it has given me a copy to work on. Actually, you can't see it because I have to stop sharing and share the new one. <laughs> Hold on a moment. All right. OK, now everyone can see that. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so now we're ready to go. You can see I'm working off of my copy now. So any changes that I make in here, um, they're going to be saved to my own Google Drive. So I can write whatever code I want, and it won't disrupt um, anyone else and what they're doing. Um, so in this session, uh, we're going to code solutions to each of the following coding challenges. I'm just going to kind of go over things like really fast. Um, you can code along with us today. If you prefer to watch the recording later, that's totally fine. Whatever you're comfortable with doing, um, you know, go ahead and do what you're most comfortable with. If we're here for you, so grab a cup of tea, grab your favorite drink, and code along with us today. So I'm going to start off with the take care of your digital kitty cat. And so for the setup, like I said, I'm demonstrating in Google Colab. You can use whatever you want. There's no starter code at all. And then there are video hints if you decide to do some of this on your own to some of our beginner Python study groups uh, sessions that we've had in the past. And so we're going to go over this code challenge statement in just a moment. And FYI, if you want to get start getting set up now for Chaitna's uh, Make a Digital Meal, there is starter code here that will be on REPL. Um, Chaitna will share um, how to fork that code, but there is like a blue button where you can, once you go to that link, fork it to your REPL account. If you don't have a REPL account and prefer to use that, you can set sign up for your account right now uh, while we're getting set up. And she's going to walk through what her coding um, coding challenge statement is. And then Nyan will do the same thing, and she will also be walking through her um, her process as well. So um, you can see that everything is here. And so now I'm going to go ahead and get started with um, the beginner Python. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? Could I get B's and thumbs up in the chat? If everyone's like ready to go, um, let me know. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Fantastic. All right. All right. Perfect. So let's just start working through the Kitty Cat app. So as you can see, we're going to have some fun with some different um, things today. And so we're going to start off. Um, you don't need to keep this here. This is a comment. Um, all right. So the for the first one here, it says create a variable called energy level and assign an integer value between 1 and 100 to it. Or you can ask the user to input um, the kitty cat's current energy level. So we're just going to hard code in to start um, the um, the um, value. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off with um, creating a variable. We're going to create a variable. We're going to call it energy level. And then in order to assign a value to it, we just use an equal sign. And then, hmm, what's a good number? I guess we'll just use the number 50 for today. And we're just going to hard code it in. If you know how to use input functions, you can go ahead and do that. Um, if we have time at the end, we will go back through and show how that is done. All right. So the next part of the challenge says, if the kitty cat's 
energy level is less than 50, print the following statement. So I'm just going to copy the statement um, that we're going to create. And so you can see here it says if, and then for the next ones it says else if and else if. So we're going to write a few, um, we're going to write a few uh, basic um, statements. Um, they're called generally called if elif else statements. So we're just going to start off by writing if. And then we're going to use that variable if energy level is less than 50. So that's what our prompt is telling us if it is less than 50. And so this is how we write it. And also keep in mind that, as you can see, because we're assigning an integer value to it, um, it does not have quotations around it. If it did, it would be a string. Um, but we don't want to do that because we want to be able to do greater than and less than in this example. So um, all right, so we add a colon. And then as you can see, once you hit enter, the uh, code automatically indents. And indentation is very important with Python. So for this, we all we need to do is if the energy level is less than 50, we're just going to print a statement. So we use a built-in function called print. And so it's very simple. It's just the word print with an open and close, open and close parentheses. And then I'm just going to copy that statement that I had earlier in here. So this first part is now done. And as you can see, once I hit enter, it automatically indented, but we want to make sure we go back in alignment with the if. And now we're going to write elif. And the reason we're doing this is because when you go to do the bonus, if you do just three if statements all down the line, um, you're going to, you would need some other code in there and we don't really have the time to go through all of that. So we're going to, for today, use elif statements. And so in this example, if the kitty cat's energy level is between 50 and 80, we're going to print the following statement. So this statement is, your kitty is hungry, give her a nutritious meal. I didn't actually read the first one. <laughs> Sorry about that. So the first one is, if the energy level is less than 50, your kitty is sleepy, turn off the music and give your kitty a quiet place to nap. I know that sometimes when I like to watch loud films, my kitties are trying to nap and it disturbs them and they like to glare at me and give me faces. So it's very important that when they're tired, you help take care of them. So um, anyway, back to the, <laughs> back to this um, third one here. Um, energy level is between 50 and 80. So a way that we can write that is LF energy level is greater than, sorry, greater than or equal to 50. And then we're going to use a Boolean value. Um, so we're going to use the and because we want both, we want both of these conditions to be true. We want it to fall within this um, range of greater than or equal to 50 or less than or equal to 80. So in order to do that, <laughs> when I first started coding, I would often just be like, energy is greater than or equal to 50. And I would forget that I have to rewrite the variable again. And then, um, oops, sorry, less than or equal to 80. So as you can see, this is the first statement or the first condition, I should say. The first condition energy level is greater than or equal to 50. The second one is energy level is less than or equal to 80. So now we've ensured that when the number falls within that range, we will print this statement here. So let's just copy and paste this. And then again, we're just going to print and paste that in. So then we're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to create another elif. You could, if you wanted to right now, just do else colon and then print the final statement. But I feel like, hey, let's do a little bit of extra practice. If energy level is greater than or equal to, sorry, is greater than 80, because we don't want it to include 80, then we're going to print this 
statement here. And this says, your kitty wants to play. Put your laptop aside and spend some time with kitty. <laughs> and this is something that I really need to listen to myself on because my kitties sometimes really want attention and they get a little annoyed with me when my work is, you know, more important than they are. And so they get a little bit upset. So let's try running the code and hopefully I did okay. Um, the first time you run code in here does take a few moments for it to connect. Um, so let's test this out. So it printed out your kitty's hungry, give her a nutritious meal. So this one is saying, okay, my number is 50. And so it evaluated, well, first it, I should just back up a little bit. First it went through this code and it said, okay, this is false. So I'm just going to keep going. And then when it came to this elif statement here, it then realized, okay, yes, this is true. So I'm going to print it. If this was also false, it would then go to the next statement. So are there any questions so far? All right. Fantastic. And I'm already somehow at 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, time went by so fast. Um, <laughs> so I don't know that I have time really to go through the bonus, but what we could do in the future um, is um, <laughs> we could probably tackle this problem again and we can tackle it again um, at a beginner Python hack session or if there is time at the end of this session, maybe I can go over what the bonus is. But I just wanted to walk through the input statement. So if you had read um, this part, you can ask the user to input the kitty cat's current energy level. If you wanted to do that, um, something just to keep in mind if you're new to the input function, the input function, function is another built-in Python function, just like the print function. So basically we want the input function to, um, so the input function, whenever you input something, even if it's a number, even if it's an integer technically that you're putting in, the input function automatically reads it as a string. So let's start by just writing what our input function is. So, um, what is your kitty cat's current energy level? And I usually like to put a space after the question mark. And so because this is going to give us a value that's a string, I think somebody, um, some people have got this in the chat. So congratulations if you have gotten it in the chat. We want to be able to cast this into an integer. And so in order to do that, we type INT and then we'll do a forward parentheses. And then at the end of that statement, we'll add the end parentheses. So now we have two basic things happening. We have the input function and then we have the integer. So let's run this. And as you can see, what happens is when you run it, it's saying, what is your kitty cats currently current energy level. I'm just going to type in 44 and I'm going to hit enter. And so it says your cat is sleepy. Turn off the music and give your cat a quiet place to nap. So I can run it again and try a different number. Maybe this time the cat's energy level is an 88. And now it's saying your cat wants to play. Put your laptop aside and spend some time with kitty. So you can see that it did read it as an integer. Then it was able to go through and do um, these basic um, um, conditions and determine which one was true and then print out a statement. And so if anyone wants to start tackling the bonus, like I said, I can't take any more time because I'm already four minutes over. Um, basically what you would want to do for your bonus is once the kitty cat has enjoyed a nap, add 30 points to their energy level. So um, just a hint, you would want to add that information here and then you're going to want to do that for each and every one. So 
Um, I wish I had time to go through this, but <laughs> it's now Chaitna's turn. And so I'm going to pass the session over to Chaitna. Please feel free to share your code in the chat during the session or on Slack in that live events channel. Chaitna, you're on. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Let me see. Uh, let me just share my screen real quick. Okay. Okay, is everybody, yeah, okay, cool. Um, awesome, so. Do please um, enlarge the font. It's It might be small for those with smaller screens. Okay. A little bit more, please. Is that, is that good? Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Go awesome, oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, so what are we gonna do today? We're just gonna uh, be making like a recipe, a recipe from a recipe cookbook, so cookbook i don't want to see a recipe cookbook okay so uh basically the cookbook has two items right now how to make a sandwich how to make a cookie sorry smoothie wow i think i need a cookie that's why i read that as a cookie but um to do this we before we get started you'd need to um fork this repl so basically uh i i'm not going to be able to go through all of those steps right now but once you click that, if you if you haven't signed in, there would be like a blue button that says fork your REPL uh, uh, and you could go ahead and do that. And then uh, once you get set up or even if you don't, it's fine. We can just it's just going to be like a fun. Uh, let's just code along or let's just enjoy what we've written kind of thing. So what are we going to do? Right. Um, we we have. Basically, two points where. Uh, we're going to be refactoring or fixing code. It's it's basically like a full cookbook, but it has like certain things that are being weird. You know, those little like things that just come in and destroy like your really cute little thing app or something. But yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to start off with um, our main class. And that is going to have all of the actions, cookbook actions, print recipe, that kind of thing. And I'll be going in detail into that in the in the code. This is just for the uh, this is just for us to understand what we're trying to do. Uh, so you pr you print print you can print the recipes available in the cookbook, uh, and whichever recipe you want to do, you can take the option in from the user, and then based on the option, you're either going to be redirected to make a sandwich or a smoothie. And you know st steps for that first sandwich, you have the steps. And then I, I've also added in the flow. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that in the code. Uh, and then for the for the second option for the smoothie, you have all of these steps or steps that I think they're like building uh, blocks, right? So we're just like we're gonna be layering over uh, over one ingredient and stuff. So yeah, that's the those are the steps and the flow. So I'm gonna be I'll. I'll quickly stop sharing and then I'll share like the REPL. Just one second. Okay, cool. And here, I think this is, I'm gonna do like a little bit more. Okay, or I could just do it in REPL, great. Okay, I think this is fine for now. Um, so basically, this is our this is our class. Uh, our sorry, this is our main main.py. And before we get into like the flow of stuff, uh, I'll just show you what files I have. I have this main file that has uh, cookbook actions, which has um, you know which has a couple of things in it. I'm going to be explaining what a class is and like a general blueprint of a class in just a second. But I have this main.py and then I have two separate files, one for sandwich and then one for smoothie. Really like breezing through it, uh, but but yeah. Okay, so what is a class, right? Uh, you can think of a class like it's, it's, it's kind of like a blueprint for, for an object um, and what does this blueprint have? It can have properties, it can have methods. And uh, what are properties? You, the self.beverage, this beverage is 
a property within this uh, within this class and uh, print name and beverage is a class method. So it kind of bundles together all of these things and keeps it together. And why do we need this? Because when you create um, maybe an instance of this class, like uh, for example, an instance of this this random class called uh, you know person info, it's like we create an instance here. How do we create it? Um, we just we call the class name and then we do the parentheses. And as soon as you do that, whatever is uh, within this init function, this init uh, special method, whatever is in it, you can you can access it um, immediately as soon as you instantiate. So uh, what I mean is, once you create the instance, if you if you click on uh, if you want to know what the beverage is, then you know like you just use the dot operator and access whatever you want uh, with this instance. So the instance, you can access the class using the instance and the class consists of whatever you want, um, like whatever you want to add to it and then uh, you'll be able to access it. And uh, like in this, in this method called print name and beverage, you have, uh, you have this, uh, self uh, like why do you keep adding self self refers refers to the instance uh like the instance within the class like you'd you'd access uh like I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to understand how to say it but um self is basically like a like a special keyword which refers to the instance of the class within the class um and you uh, for this example, you're taking a name, and then you have this like weird F, and then something within within um, you know brace within double quotes. So this uh, here is F string, and this is a very cool feature in later later Python versions. I think three point six and above. And uh, with this, you could you can literally add in uh, any expressions within your code. Uh, I mean within your string. Usually in a print statement, you could just you'd just be able to pass in like a string or something. Here you can do string interpolation, which means uh, literally for name, uh, suppose I'm passing in my name, right? So that would be like added to, you know, added to, it will be replaced instead of this uh, name placeholder. And yeah, so that's like a basic blueprint of a class. I wave my hands a lot. I'm sorry, I'm trying to not do it, but yeah. Okay, so for, for our um, use case, what are we going to do? So we have a class called cookbook actions. And now you'll understand it a little bit better because we're just going to be quickly walking through what, what we have. Um, and here we have, uh, here we have in it, we have this method called make cookbook recipe. We have another one called print cookbook recipe choices. And then we come to this thing called if name equals main. It's not within the... Uh, cookbook actions um, class, but it's separate. So what is it, right? Um, anytime you see something like this, you have to think you have to think about piecing it separately. Like if you have like this complex line of code, how do you try to break it down one by one? So name, what is this name? Uh, it's it's a special built-in variable, and what does it what does it generally return? So it's it it is set. Um, it is set to return the name of the top level environment of the program. So the top level environment is something that will be executed before anything else is. Like it's the starting point to your program. And for like ours is ours is main.py. And in any Python program, main is like the start. So let's just quickly see what that is. Uh, so this is a shell, and you can just you can get it. Uh, it it would be in any of your systems, Mac or uh, Mac would be terminal. Uh, if you have Python installed, then you can just type Python three, and you'll you'll get into a shell. So let's type in name. Here it says main, right? So that's that's what I'm talking about. So if this is like the topmost entry point, so if name equals main, uh, main, then what? So uh, this uh, let's let's jump back and and see what we mean here. Uh, if I, if I try to run this. I'm gonna get uh, name food item is not defined, and and when you get these error messages, it's really important to like uh, 
piece, uh, you know, to look at each individual thing again and not get, I, I understand error messages are weird and scary, but yeah, but they explain a lot of details. They become your friend later on as you keep coding. So um, file, great, file main.py, that's where we're at. And then it says line 80, which is this, it uh, highlights this line and then it says name error, name food item is not defined. So, yeah, so um, what uh, what do you think we have to do here? We're, we're missing something, obviously, because it, this this error is being thrown, and we're doing this thing where we have this thing called food uh, food item, and then we're doing uh, dot print cookbook recipes, and we've seen this method somewhere above. We've seen it here. Oh, sorry, we've seen it here. So, what exactly do you think we can do uh, here to to kind of you know, to kind of get it, get rid of this error. Any thoughts? I'm sorry, I'm going really, really fast, but yeah, hopefully we can, um, yeah, we can get to a good point. So it's not defined. It, you're, you're directly uh, using food item to access, uh, um, yeah, uh, you're using food item to access this this food recipe food sorry print cookbook recipe choices which is inside the inside the cookbook actions class so basically we're trying to do leave this so we're trying we, we're just doing this so in, in case of info instance we're doing this like we're just we we haven't even created something but we're trying to yeah yeah that's perfect so, so like, uh, so what do we what do we have to do to create the instance of cookbook actions? Uh, we we just saw an example for this for this class called class person info. We created an instance saying this and then person info. And so, when you go here, you're just going to do okay because you you already have you know you already have the name. We're just going to type that in, and then we're going to say cookbook actions. Thank you, REPL. OK, so once you do that, then you're a little bit in the clear, right? So now if you run it, it's just going to it's just going to say, well, you know, what uh, women who code Python's cookbook work in progress because we're adding more recipes. And then uh, enter your choice. Directly enter your choice. But what? How, how do you enter your choice when you don't even know what of what you have in the cookbook, right? So um, let's just type in something else. Yeah, it's going to throw me an error. I'll explain why through the int error over there. The same thing that Stephanie was talking about. Um, so you're you're doing print cookbook recipe choices, and that method's over here. And it's it's kind of like it it starts off with oh print, and it's like a multi line print. So a single, uh, if you if you want to do like multi line print within one print statement, uh, wrap it within triple quotes, and then do like line by line, and then it's gonna you know put it there. And now you're you're at this like weird point where you don't even know what recipes there are. So how do you print self? Uh, how do you print these recipes? And these recipes are present here, self dot recipes. So how do you print it? Uh, that would be the next step. And I want to print just I want to print the recipes and I also want to print a number next to them like like an incremental in an incremental way. So how do you do that, right? Any like we've dropped in like this hint. So like do you do you feel comfortable uh thinking about this? Like you just have to like you have to loop um these variables. There's like a million ways to do the same thing, but you know, for the sake of whatever we're doing, I'm going to try uh, talking about loops. So we're going to loop through self dot recipes, and then we're going to use enumerate. Um, and let's just let's just start writing it because just just for the sake of time. So general for loop, right? For let's just call it recipe in self dot recipes because that's what we're we're doing. And then let's just say we're just going to do recipe here. But I don't really want that. I just don't want this. How do I get this, the other stuff? Um, 
that's what we're we're using enumerate for. So what is enumerate? It takes an iterable. An iterable can be a list, um, uh, like uh, I don't know, like an object. It, it can be anything that can be iterated. It could be tuple. Um, and once you pass that in, uh, once you pass that in, it will return an enumerate object, and that object will be a tuple consisting of two values. One is a count, and one is a value. One is the value, the actual value. What is the count? Um, it's like an index. It, it keeps incrementing one by one. It basically references um, whichever uh, whichever element inside the list or whatever you're pointing at. So, um, you know, for example, here this is going to be zero um, based on enumerate, and this is going to be one, um, you know, based on enumerate. So it's going to do zero one, right? Okay, fine. What is the syntax of enumerate? It is enumerate of self dot recipes. And here, obviously, because it returns two things, we're going to unpack it. Um, it's going to return a count, it's going to return a value. Value is the recipe in this case, because that's what we're, we're looping over self dot recipes. Okay, so count and then recipe. And now it starts with zero, right? So how are we going to, um, like, uh, if you if you try to print this, let's just, let's just print it and see. Uh, and then we'll, because we're all hungry, we'll, we'll, you know, make the meal after this. Um, so let me try to just run this. It says zero and one. What do you think we can do now? Um, oh, sorry. Is my screen. Okay. Uh, so like, is it zero or one? Okay. Yeah, you can, you can, you can do that. Yeah. You can call it using the index. It's it's still doing the same thing, um, but um, you can you can also just increment this by one, right? Like it, then basically your entire uh, your entire loop is going to just start with one, right? So yeah, so it starts with one and then goes into two and and so on and so forth. Just just print count plus one. You could you could you do do like a normal. You could initialize like an index outside or you could just use range oh sorry you could use range you could do multiple things i just wanted to talk about enumerate for today so yeah that in and yeah yeah for sure uh if 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 any of this is like you know it's it for sure it's all like over the top because sometimes we like we see something and 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 then it doesn't register i like while while writing this all of us like like we have to look it up multiple times and don't worry about it at all how uh, you can always like revisit it reach out to us and yeah all of that good stuff for now just uh just kind of like you know drink your drink your coffee or your tea or whatever beverage and just chill with us and yeah cool so now that we've we're at this point why do we why do we do the integer right because input returns a string by by nature and you're going to typecast it into an integer and that's what we want because we're going to be that's that's the loop for i mean that's the way we're going to be looping uh i mean based on the recipe choice we're going to pick the recipe that we want okay i'm going to i'm going to be real quick and just run over the the recipe what do you think what do you feel like doing today um do you wanna do you wanna do a sandwich or do you want to do a smoothie? And and based on based on the recipe choice, you're passing it into something called make cookbook recipe. And you know, like if your recipe's recipe choice is one, you're make, you're instantiating, um, you're creating an instance of sandwich, otherwise smoothie. Otherwise, we're, we're trying so hard to add more recipes. So please check back in that kind of thing. Okay, sandwich. Are we all in for sandwich? Awesome, awesome. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Let's let's go with um, let's go with the sandwich. Great. Uh, I'm going to do more here and kind of increment. Sorry, kind of increase the screen. Okay. So let's make our delicious sandwich. You toast toast the bread slices. Toast it with olive oil. It's awesome. And then let's let's continue. Right. So um, are we are we good to go? 
Okay, uh, I'm gonna quickly do this. Uh, you can play with it however you want to, but yeah. So for the spread, we have multiple choices. We have hummus, we have Dijon mustard, and you have, you have, you know, we have pesto, vegan mayo, and so on and so forth. I'm just gonna, does anybody have any, uh, like any thoughts about this? Okay, I'm just gonna go with hummus in this and let's keep going, right? Um, awesome. And now we're we're doing fillings. Uh, and here I'm just gonna my sandwich is gonna be really weird because I'm just choosing the first two options of whatever I'm seeing. Um, I'm gonna decrease the font. And do you want to add herbs like dill or other seasonings? Uh, Awesome. Let's do that. Uh, we, we have some thoughts for dill. We're going to add that. And that's it. Like your, your sandwich is completed uh, with hummus, whatever choices you entered before. And tend to sit back, relax, and enjoy your sandwich. And if you ever want to, like, you know, uh, add more things or something like that, you, or check out the other smoothie one, you could, you could do that or reach out to us. But I went over my time. I think I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna quickly pass it to Nayan. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, good job. Yeah, I'm gonna share my screen now. <clears throat> Do you see my screen? How is the font size? Looks great, Nayan. Um, Okay, thank yeah. you. So, so welcome to this, the third part. So this part is cleaning your digital room with um, three concepts in Python, which are unpacking um, this asterisk arcs and a double asterisk. I don't know how to pronounce this, but it is, it stands for keyword arguments in Python. And this session is actually inspired by the status of my room during the final exam period because I wasn't cleaning my room at all. So first, there are uh, three parts. And we'll start from the first part, <clears throat> which covers unpacking. So the prompt is, you've got a package from a friend that consists of three items. Try unboxing and inspecting it. So the way you can first unbox uh, gifts like this gifts from a friend is that uh, we're going to use something called unpacking and in Python you can um, assign multiple items in an iterable an iterable means something that you can loop or iterate over into multiple variables so for example let's say there's like this one two three list then you can do one, two, three, like this. And what Python will do is that if I only print, if I only try printing two, it shows two. The reason is that this one is get, uh, this gets assigned to the variable called one and two gets assigned to two and three gets assigned to the last variable, which is three. So this is unpacking, and the same works for a couple. We can try printing three and see if our expectation is correct. Yes, we are getting three. So this is how you unpack multiple variables. And then, so first, we want to unbox the gifts from the friend. And there are three items, and we don't know what those items are. So we first want to unpack the gifts. Item one, item two, item three. And then we want to inspect items, the items. And the, there's this inspect function I wrote that takes three arguments. So we can just simply call inspect with item one. Item, <clears throat> item two, and item three. Now 
let's see what we got from the friend. Oh, we got we got some gifts. So first, so this formatting is fast, so I'm gonna execute the code again. So first we got a letter. True friends are always together in spirit. And second, we got a bouquet, like a bunch of flowers. And third, we got a gift that's a rose gold tone leather watch. So, <clears throat> sorry. The second item turned out to be a bouquet, a bunch of flowers. And you want to check what flowers there are and what each of them smells like. We already know what flowers there are. So we want to take out each flower and then smell them. So first, we know the second item holds the flowers. So we want to unpack the four flowers into four different variables. So we can do flower one, flower two, flower three, and flower four. Then we can assign item two. Then we want to smell each flower. And there's this smell method. You can, uh, that takes only one argument. So you can smell one flower at a time. So let's first smell the first flower. Mmm, you're smelling freesia. And then let's do the same for the rest of the flowers. Yes, we have smelled all the flowers. I hope you can like kind of um, smelling the flowers theoretically. <laughs> and then now I think we can move on to the second part, which is unpacking and asterisk arcs. So now the prompt is, oh no, your desk is a mess. You are uh, given this task of throwing away all the trash in a trash can and empty the trash can. So we have a lot of items on the desk, which is pen, uh, which are pencil case, empty water bottle, eraser crumbs, used tissue, and battery charger. But when you want to throw away all the trash, we don't want to throw away the pencil case and battery charger. So we want to be careful. And then we have this trash can. And we can do three things with a trash can. If we do trash can dot check status, it'll show the current status of the trash can. If we do trash can dot put, and then we do this asterisk arcs, it'll take all the arguments into the trash can. And if we do trash can dot empty, it empties the trash can. So first, what is this notation? So this asterisk arcs takes an infinitely many number of positional arguments. In Python, we have, let's quickly create like a function, take many arcs. If we call this function, that takes multiple arguments. This currently this all this can only take three arguments, and these are called positional arguments because if we switch the order of arguments, the way you see the output will be different. Let's say we do three, one, two. So these are positional arguments. But if we just write asterisk arcs, so arcs, this is just the convention. You can even call it like potato or something. The name does not matter as long as you have this asterisk. So you can call this arcs. This takes 
infinitely many positional arguments. So we can try printing arcs. Then you'll see a tuple that contains all the arguments, all the positional arguments that comes from calling the function. I can even pass like a string. Then it'll be a tuple of three integers and one string. So first, what we want to do is that we want to um, throw away only the three items in the middle and items on desk. So we what we want to do is that we can combine, try combining unpacking and arcs here. So first, let's just first think about how we can unpack all the items on desk. We will do something like item one, item two, item three, item four, item five, and items on desk. But if we replace this part, this part with asterisk items, let's, let's first try printing this and see what Python is doing. Item one, items, and item five. Oh, let's see. So we have, we see pencil case and battery charger. And now this has been like, the trash has been grouped into uh, one um, item. So what we wanna do is that we have successfully extracted only the trash from the items on desk. Uh, desk. And then first let's try checking the status of our trash can. It is empty. Now, let's try putting all the trash, which is the middle items, into the trash can. And you can, you can do items. And now, we can check the status again. So we have put all the trash into the trash can. And now the only one task we are left is just emptying the trash can, which you can do with trash can dot empty. So let's empty it and check the status again. It is empty. So we have discarded the trash from the desk. So the last part is unpacking in two asterisk keyword arguments. So let's first read the prompt. Now you need to do laundry as there's a pile, pile of clothes you haven't watched for like two weeks. This is actually a true story. I experienced it during my final period and um, you need to use two asterisks to put clothes with the detergent into the washing machine. So you have a lot of clothes and you have detergent and also the washing machine. So the washing machine has three methods similar to the trash can, check status, put and start. If you do check uh, washing machine dot check status, it shows the current status. And the way you put all the clothes to clean them, to wash them, is that you first want to put the detergent and the clothes. Then after that, you wanna start the machine. So first, what we wanna do is that um, we first wanna like check the status of the washing machine to see if it is working correctly. So it is empty. Now, let's try putting some clothes. So we can do washing machine um, put detergent and then keyword arguments. 
but I think I just want to do this or even like this first trying this try this and see if it is working yeah so what this two asterisk k args k keyword arguments is doing is that it is very similar to args but it's uh, but the difference that uh, here lies on this part. So if we specify the name of the argument, it doesn't matter. Um, the order you put the arguments does not matter. However, this is not a keyword argument. This is a positional argument, but this has a name. So this is a keyword argument. So we have put the detergent with the keyword argument. And then we check the status. So the clothes are all dirty. So we want to start the washing machine. And then hopefully our clothes are all clean after doing that. Let's see. Now they are all clean. So this is it for my session and thank you so much for following fantastic well thank you so much um chetna and nayan so much um for sharing your um segments and um i just really appreciated both of the work that you put in and want to give a big round of applause and thank you i wish we had time for more programming right now but <laughs> the conference will close in three minutes so i just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who attended um our event and i did include uh, a link to a survey um, for the overall conference experience so please take a few moments um, after the session uh, after the conference is over to um to respond to that and um you know uh, please please join us on slack you're welcome to um you know say, say hi and um, we will have more events more hack sessions with women who code python track so thanks everyone again so much for joining and um nayan or chetna was there anything else you wanted to say or add um at the end here just wanted to iterate on what uh nayan was saying and stephanie you too about like it takes time to know all of these concepts in general. It, it just comes with practice. The more you do, the more you'll get into it. And always keep, uh, you know, always keep doing tackling one small thing at a time. And yeah, just always reach out to us if if you want to anytime. Yeah, That's definitely. We are in. We are very active on social media. <clears throat> Please feel free to like join our Slack channel. Fantastic. So I'll just drop um, some of those links again. If you go to our beacons, you will be able to see all of our links, um, like our Slack community and our social media and our events page. So you can register for upcoming events and um, so much more. So um, again, once again, thank you everyone so much. I hope everyone had a fantastic conference. Like I said, please take a few moments just to fill out um, that survey. Um, I believe you'll be emailed it as well, but um, if you want to, you can go ahead and complete that now. So the conference is going to close out in about a, about a minute. So thank you everyone so much. Big round of applause for Chetna and Nayan. Yay! <laughs> and also for Stephanie. And yeah, definitely. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. So, Great, we're so great working with Chaitla and Nayan. They're just fantastic. So, all right, everyone. Bye.